job now. Vice President Mike Pence warned Republican lawmakers on Tuesday that inaction is not an option on Obamacare, urging Republicans to do their jobs by passing legislation to undo former President Barack Obama's signature legislative achievement. Congress needs to step up, Pence said Tuesday in remarks at a National Retail Federation summit in Washington. Congress needs to do their job, and Congress needs to do their job now. The House narrowly advanced a bill to repeal and replace Obamacare in May, but the Senate has struggled to do the same with its razor-thin majority. GOP sense. Mike Lee of Utah and Jerry Moran of Kansas sunk majority leader Mitch McConnell's bill late Monday when they joined sense. Susan Collins of Maine and Rand Paul of Kentucky in opposition of the draft. McConnell and President Donald Trump then called on lawmakers to focus on simply repealing Obamacare and crafting a bipartisan replacement plan later. Obamacare has failed, and Obamacare must go, Pence said. President Trump and I are grateful for the efforts for Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and the vast majority of Republicans who've worked so hard in the House and Senate to keep their promise to repeal and replace Obamacare. Pence echoed comments the president tweeted earlier. Most Republicans were loyal, terrific and worked really hard, Trump wrote, adding that there are no truer words. But last night we learned that the Senate still doesn't have consensus on a bill to repeal and replace Obamacare at the same time, Pence continued. President Trump and I fully support the majority leader's decision to move forward with a bill that just repeals Obamacare and gives Congress time, as the president said to work on a new health care plan that will start with a clean slate. Pence noted that Republicans in 2015 passed a similar bill that went to then-President Obama's desk, though the vote was largely symbolic given the Democratic president's inevitable veto. Nevertheless, he encouraged them to do it again, this time sending the legislation to a Republican president ready to put his signature on the first major bill of his administration. But to be clear, Pence added. The Senate should vote to repeal now and replace later or return to the legislation carefully crafted in the House and Senate. But either way, inaction is not an op. Trump says he plans to let Obamacare fail. President Donald Trump said Tuesday that he plans to let Obamacare fail, saying Democrats would be willing to work with Republicans on replacing it after it crashes. I think we're probably in that position where we'll just let Obamacare fail. We're not gonna own it. I'm not gonna own it, Trump told reporters. We'll let Obamacare fail and then Democrats are going to come to us. Original story, President Donald Trump on Tuesday morning called for letting Obamacare fail, just hours after saying Republicans should act now to repeal the law offering seemingly mixed messages as the party tries to regroup following the collapse of the Senate health care bill on Monday night. Trump was consistent, however, in saying that Republicans need to rally around a new health care plan to fulfill the GOP's seven-year promise to get rid of former President Barack Obama's signature legislative achievement. As I have always said, let Obamacare fail and then come together and do a great health care plan. Stay tuned. Trump tweeted on Tuesday morning, after having written Monday night that Republicans should just repeal failing Obamacare now and work on a new health care plan that will start from a clean slate. Themes will join in. The president has been applying pressure to Republicans to move quickly on getting rid of Obamacare, so that he can move on to other priorities such as a tax reform package and an infrastructure plan. But Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has struggled to find a health care bill that will satisfy enough conservatives and moderates to secure the 50 votes needed for passage. On Monday night, as Trump was hosting a handful of Republican senators at the White House, news emerged that since Mike Lee of Utah and Jerry Moran of Kansas were no votes, joining Maine Senator Susan Collins and Kentucky Senator Rand Paul in opposition, and sinking the current bill's chances. McConnell then announced that the Senate will vote on a so-called clean repeal that undoes Obamacare without immediately putting into place legislation to replace it. On Tuesday morning, Trump spread the blame while still complimenting many members of his party. We were let down by all of the Democrats and a few Republicans. Most Republicans were loyal, terrific and worked really hard. We will return. He tweeted. 
Trump also expressed his frustration with the legislative process. With only a very small majority, the Republicans in the House and Senate need more victories next year since deems totally obstruct, no votes. He tweeted, adding, the Senate must go to a 51-vote majority instead of current 60 votes. Even parts of full repeal need 60. Eight deems control Senate. Crazy. As the realities of how difficult a simultaneous repeal and replace could be for Republicans, Trump has at times vacillated between the two backup strategies, sometimes pushing for a clean repeal and at other times suggesting that Obamacare would collapse on its own, leaving a vacuum for lawmakers to fill. The president has previously suggested that the latter option could force Democrats to the negotiating table, creating a window for a bipartisan solution. But Democrats have been largely unified in their opposition to any health care reform package that repeals Obamacare, insisting instead that the current law be amended and changed instead of thrown out entirely. The prospect of a repeal now, replace later approach began to surface in recent weeks as prospects for a compromise in the Senate grew increasingly dim. Republicans in both the House and Senate easily passed a clean repeal bill in 2015 that was vetoed by then-President Barack Obama, and a return to a similar bill has been suggested as a way for the GOP to make good on its long-held campaign promise to do away with Obamacare. Such an approach has been advocated by Senator Rand Paul, Arkey, one of the four lawmakers whose opposition sunk the current iteration of the GOP's repeal and replace efforts. A clean repeal. Paul told Fox News last month, would unify the Republican Party by allowing conservative members to vote for a bill they can support. Then, Paul suggested, the GOP's more moderate wing could work with Democrats on an Obamacare replacement package without needing conservative members' votes. Tuesday morning, Senator James Lankford, our Oklahoma, said he remained optimistic that he and his GOP colleagues would be able to move forward in one way or another on health care legislation, although he predicted that the Senate would wind up with a skinny-down version of what we couldn't vote on this time. The next legislation, the Oklahoma senator forecasted, will do away with whatever Republicans can compromise on while a larger strategy is formulated. I'm still optimistic that we can and because we must. This is kind of a no-fail moment that you have to be able to resolve all these issues, he said. Sinclair Executive Defense Company from Biased Media in Internal Memo An executive at local broadcast TV giant Sinclair defended the company and lashed out against what he called biased news organizations that have an agenda to destroy our reputation in an internal memo obtained by Politico. The memo written by Sinclair's vice president of news Scott Livingston and sent to Sinclair station news directors, said he wants to dispel some of the myths being reported about the organization. In the memo, Livingston lists several storylines that have emerged around the Maryland-based television company and provides what he said are facts proving them false. They range from reports about its must-run segments to morale at its Washington station WJLA. John Oliver host of HBO's Last Week Tonight, also made Sinclair and its must-run segments the focus of a 19-minute segment earlier this month. Emuk of the reporting about Sinclair in recent months has been irresponsible and much of it is just plain false, Livingston wrote in the memo. News directors were asked to discuss the issues outlined in the memo with staffers. Sinclair has come under fire over the past year as it has drastically increased its national footprint while pushing a more right-leaning point of view through segments it requires all of its stations to air. Those segments include commentary from former Trump White House official Boris Epstein as well as a terrorism alert desk. Sinclair is also in the process of getting even bigger, as it pursues an acquisition of the local TV stations owned by Tribune Media. The family that owns the network, the Smiths, have long been supporters of Republican candidates. Livingston argues in the memo that while it's true Sinclair issues must run content, media reports which say they are of poor quality and politically tilted are not true, and that must runs amount to less than one hour per week, on average, of Sinclair stations coverage, compared with more than 35 hours of local news. Plus, he argued that such commentary provides a viewpoint not usually found in the national media. 
While it is true that Sinclair offers commentary segments from Mark Hyman and Boris Epstein, this content is clearly identified as commentary and constitutes a tiny percentage of the station's weekly broadcast content, Livingston wrote. Mark and Boris' commentaries provide a viewpoint that often gets lost in the typical national broadcast media dialogue. Boris Epstein worked in the Trump White House, a fact that Sinclair makes no effort to hide, and provides a unique insight that viewers can't find anywhere else. The presence of former administrative personnel serving as news commentators is a well-accepted practice in journalism. Livingston also specifically called out the Washington Post for reporting on falling morale at WJLA in Washington, writing that the Post largely ignored information about investments, awards and ratings growth at the station while assembling fear-mongering reports. WJLA was sold to Sinclair in 2014 by the Albert Ann family which owns Politico. It's important to remember that The Post is a Sinclair Media competitor, Livingston wrote. As such, any discerning reader of their newspaper should view The Post's reports about our company with a healthy sense of skepticism. A Washington Post spokesperson declined to comment. Livingston goes on to defend reporters from the Sinclair-owned website Circa from being called conservative commentators after appearing on Fox News questioning why reporters from The Washington Post and New York Times aren't labeled as commentators on MSNBC. In the closing paragraphs, Livingston alleges that reporters from major media outlets are biased, and calls on them to openly disclose their political tendencies, adding that doing so would help consumers understand the agenda of the reporters and editors providing the content. What we find most troubling in the reporting about our company, by major media outlets, like the New York Times and Washington Post, is the omission of key facts in their stories, Livingston wrote. Such omissions suggest the existence of either journalistic incompetency or editorial bias. We do not believe these journalists are incompetent, so we are left to conclude that they are biased. We are proud to offer a range of perspectives, both conservative and liberal, to our consumers, on our Sinclair broadcast stations each day. It is unfortunate that so many of our competitors do not provide the same marketplace of ideas, he continued. Our commitment is to tracking the truth, providing context and perspective in our reporting and serving our communities with valuable and, at times, life-saving information. We value our viewers and our journalists who work hard each day to serve the communities in which they live, all across this great country. It's concerning and troubling that so many once-trusted news organizations continue to push false narratives with an agenda to destroy our reputation and discredit the great journalism across our company. A Sinclair spokesperson declined to comment further.